in 2011, Toyota issued a TSB, a technical service bulletin, that said some 2006 to 2011 of those 2.4 liter engines exhibit abnormal oil consumption. They had defective piston rings that did not seal the engine correctly inside. The pistons have various sets of rings. The top ones are compression for the compression, but the bottom ones are oil control rings and they're supposed to scrape the oil off the engine so that it goes back down into the engine instead of squeezing into the combustion chamber and then burning. And there's a spring inside that keeps them separated so they seal and between the rings and the inside of the piston there are holes to let the oil go back into the engine. And then the problem with these Toyota engines Either the holes weren't large enough or there weren't enough of them to drain the oil right. So Toyota's fix was to redesign the piston, then they had to replace them all. Now in a healthy engine, the top piston rings keep the pressure inside and the bottom ones keep scraping the oil off, putting it back into the bottom of the engine so the oil is used over and over again and isn't burned. So needless to say, Toyota's fix is a very expensive one to replace the pistons in your engine. The engine's got to be taken out of the car, completely disassembled, new pistons put in and new piston rings. It's a very expensive fix. And then Toyota replaced the AZ engine with the AR engine. It's a little bit bigger and they haven't had any problems with those. The ones that burn oil, they had a cast aluminum block, the cylinder block, cast iron liners, and cast aluminum heads. And hey, at least they did a better job than in the past with the Chevy Vegas. Cast aluminum block and they just coated it and when that wore off they burnt oil like mad and their fix of course was to put liners in aftermarket so they lasted if you own one they're still good engines I and mean, you can take it back to toyota but they got a very limited recall only certain models kind of evil on that one they should have recalled them all but they didn't so if you have one check the oil a lot and add the oil it can run perfectly fine otherwise it's when people let them get really low on oil then the engines just destruct because they don't have enough lubrication inside. And don't let your oil get dirty. Personally, I think some of the problem was these guys thinking they can really do that 10,000 mile oil change and the engines wear out faster, especially an engine that has a problem in the first place. If I owned one of those, I go back old style. I would change the oil and filter every 3,000 miles on one of those. Now, as I said, in 2015, Toyota offered to fix some of these engines for free. It was a limited time period and a limited amount of models. If you want to check if yours is covered, NHTSA, the website, the Highway Traffic Safety Association website, and you can look it up by the VIN number to see if there's anything that fits your model. But really, as far as I'm concerned, Toyota responded to that too little and too late. They built the engines in the United States. They obviously did not have the quality control that they had in the Japanese built engines. That's what I like about my old Celica. Look at this. Japan. And in that case, not just the engine, the whole car was made in Japan. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that's why it's lasted so long. Because if I want to buy a Japanese car, I want the thing made in Japan by the people who made them best. And even the Mercedes. Hey, I'm not going to buy one, but if I did, it would be this one. Because look, it's made in Stuttgart, Germany. The fancy ones. They're still made in Germany, believe me. They got a lot of technology in them, but they are the best built ones that they sell. I would not buy one that isn't made in Germany. Hey, take my wife's Lexus, all made in Japan. Engine, body, everything, made in Japan, real quality. Now, as I said, if you've got one of these, check through any kind of recalls, any notifications. National Highway Traffic and Safety Association website, like I said, maybe you'll get a free fix. Who knows, but if you own one, check your oil a lot. Use quality oil, and me, as I said, I change the oil in them every 3,000 miles just to make sure. Now, my own personal customers that had that engine in their Toyotas, none of them had an engine ever go out because they were checking their oil. And I'd say, hey, get two or three quarts of those plastic screw caps, throw them in your trunk. So if you're somewhere and the oil's low, just add it. Once it gets half a quart down on a dipstick, just put half a quart in. If you maintain it, you're really not going to have any problems. But of course, being a Toyota, one would expect them not to burn oil in the first place. Because I really haven't seen any engine problems 
in Toyotas other than those Celicas that had that Yamaha designed engine and that was a mistake on Toyota's behalf to use that Yamaha design. They should have just stuck to their own designs and not gone to a high rev engine that only puts out the horsepower at really high revs but has an oil pump system that's worse that won't pump the oil at those RPMs fast enough, suck air, it's called dry sump, it sucks air, and then boom, up went the engines. As far as I'm concerned, that's the only other real engine mistake that Toyota made, was using those Yamaha designed engines in the Celicas, and really, that pretty much led to the end of Celica. Celicas were made for decades, and then they put that engine in, they got a bad reputation, and then, they stopped making them. And to their credit, Toyota no longer makes this 2.4 liter four cylinder engine that had the problems. And the new one that they have, I haven't seen any problems in them at all yet. Now, they stopped selling the United States for 2021, and we'll get into why. But first, We'll get into a little history of these things. Now, if you look at this thing, you wouldn't even recognize the original 1951 because it turns out that in 1941, the Japanese army captured a Willys Jeep. They took it back to Japan and they reverse engineered. In other words, they copied it. Take a look at it. I mean, they look like Jeeps. They were Jeeps. And the early bigger Land Cruisers, they had a six cylinder engine in them that had pretty much interchangeable parts from a Chevrolet straight six engine that that they copied it from. They make them better and better and better as time goes on. So you might say, oh Scotty, then why don't they sell them anymore in the United States? Well, they still sell them in the rest of the world, but it's a big V8 engine and it gets low gas mileage. You can get anywhere between 14.8 and 15.8 miles a gallon, depending if it's in a highway or city. And you might think, well, that's horrible. What's well, a big all wheel drive vehicle? It weighs a lot, it's huge, and it's got this big powerful V8 engine. Now, you might think that's bad, but I had a customer in Houston and he had had an old one and it had the big old straight six cylinder engine with giant coffee sized pistons inside it, a carburetor and a three speed standard tranny. He got single digits sometimes, he'd get six, sometimes he might get eight miles a gallon. Those were tremendous gas hogs. When you consider the weight of this thing and the speed that it has, that's the best gas mileage it's going to get. They stopped selling in the United States. 2021 was the last ones I ever saw because it lowers the cafe gas mileage rating. So the Americans penalize companies that have gas hog cars and Toyota didn't want to make their whole fleet get lower gas mileage ratings so they don't sell them in the United States. Like I say, they sell in lots of other places. People are nuts about these vehicles. If you're thinking about buying one in the United States, my advice is do it fast because if you don't, the price is going to go even sky higher. This thing's got 160,000 miles and he paid 28 grand drive out. These things have high resale values, but as you can see, low gas mileage. This is 16.3 combined city highway. Shows you all the trips people have taken. You got all your tire pressure. You can have the gas mileage while you're driving if you want. It's not running now, so it's not going to say anything. Since it refueled last time, it's getting 16.3 miles per gallon. Just realized you get one of these things, it's cavernous inside. There is a lot of space in these things. It's a gigantic armrest. The thing is huge. Now this is a 2009, so it's old school. But if you want a big, stable vehicle that's safe for your family, you can't beat one of these things. And even though it's older, it's still got electronic controlled transmission. You can play with all kinds of things, hill climbing, you name it. And being a Toyota, you know it's going to be reliable. It's going to start up every time. And even though it's old, it's still got a backup camera on it. And as I said, cavernous room, you can see the dog's been resting here. There's a bunch of dog hair. There's all kinds of space back here. Look at that. Real seats. They have a reasonable amount of room in them. Fold them up. You got a lot of space. And of course, you got many different ways to open it. You can open it part way, you can open it whole way. It is a well designed vehicle. And when you combine the size and weight and the fact that it's all wheel drive, this thing is not going to get stuck in the snow. You're going to be able to go anywhere. Now, it's certainly gone a long way from the original copy of the Willys Jeep. It's still got a lot of roughness of the military vehicle, but it's got creature comforts well beyond anything that Willie would have dreamed up when he made the general purpose vehicle for the Army. And when the Japanese started to copy because they thought their army needed one of those too. And of course being a later model one we're not dealing with any of this timing bell crap. It's all timing chain. It's all metal. You don't have to think about it. You just do normal maintenance. And it's certainly solid built. Listen to the hood. 
That's a hood. That's not a piece of tin rattling. And has he had any problems with it? No. Starts right up. The original owner took it to the dealer all the time, had all the maintenance done. Really, even if you don't do that, mainly you just need to change the oil and filter every 5,000 miles or so, it'll probably run just the same. You want to talk about a smooth idle, there's no shaking in this baby in gear. Now normally you got to worry about the bump at the end of my driveway, but this thing's so high up in the air, we're not even going to slow down for it. I mean, it flies over that with no problem at all. You are high up in the air. You feel safe and secure. You can just feel the heft of this vehicle as you drive it down the road. And yeah, the gas mileage stinks, but there's nothing you can do about that. With a vehicle this big and this heavy, with that big V8 engine and the all-wheel drive in the rain, we step on the gas, this baby picks them up and puts them down. Without any kind of drifting or slipping, this thing was basically a modified Willys Jeep on steroids. So, unlike the Willys Jeep that can only go, you know, 45, 50 miles an hour, rattle like mad, this thing does it with creature comforts. It can go a heck of a lot faster than that. And look, I've been driving, so the gas mileage is already starting to drop. Now, when I was younger, the Chevy Suburban was a thing for people to have for carrying families going around. Believe me, this thing blows them away. These things can regularly go five, 600,000 miles or more. You will never get that out of a modern Suburban. But these, unfortunately, they're not selling in the United States anymore because the gas mileage ratings too low and Toyota does not want to lower their cafe ratings in the United States. And yeah, if you're a purist, you're just mad about an automatic transmission, but they're very dependable and really, in the United States, it's been a long time since they sold a standard transmission. They just didn't. You know, Americans want automatics. It's very dependable. I've never yet to see one break. The all-wheel drive system by Toyota has been pretty much perfected. It's an excellent system. It's just, you got to live with low gas miles. As usual in luxury Toyotas, the quality is high. Leather seats, car's getting older, leather seats are still in immaculate shape. You can see as I drive it, the gas mileage drops. It's now under 16 into the 15s. Even though it's old, hey, the GPS system from Toyota still works pretty good. We're right by the ocean there, you can see the blue. Kind of basic because it's an old system, but it works fine. For a vehicle this size, it's got very responsive steering. And with all this weight, excellent brakes. ABS system works fine still. It's a Toyota. They don't break down much. Let me tell you, I feel safe in this thing, you know? You're not worried about somebody hitting you, you know, what's going to happen to me? No. <laughs> you don't have to worry about what's going to happen to the people if you hit anybody. And yes, is in all my favorite vehicles, there it is, made in Japan. Now, the owner had one question. He thinks, oh, the brakes are kind of soft. Well, they're not really soft. That's how they're designed for this. He had an FJ Cruiser before this, and he got rid of that because having kids, he said the suicide doors really got in the way, and so he made money on it, so it didn't really matter. But kind of strange that it came from a Willys Jeep to evolve into this luxury vehicle, right? They're not made for cornering at 100 miles an hour. You could do it if you had to, if somebody's chasing you, I guess, but they're made for comfort, safety. The one thing that a lot of people are always asking me about is, hey, how many miles are too many miles on a used vehicle? Well, this has got a lot of miles. Doesn't mean squat. I've seen these things with four or 500,000 miles on them. So, even though he had to pay 28 grand, if he went out and sold it today, He'd probably get 34 or 35 because since they're not selling in the United States anymore, just because of the bad gas mileage ratings, there's plenty of people that don't care that much about gas mileage ratings, especially older people that want safety or people with a family that want safety that perhaps don't even drive all that much. They don't care what the gas mileage is. So something like this, that's an immaterial thing when they buy it. But the shape that this thing is in, if you would have blindfolded me, I couldn't have told you what year the vehicle was if I was riding in it. It works perfectly fine. They are overbuilt machines and there's nothing wrong with getting one with this kind of mods, especially where he bought it. It was from the original owner. It had one owner and they took it to the dealer all the time to get it maintained. Some cars like Jags, Mercedes, BMWs, Audis, you really got to make sure it was maintained correctly. 
This is a Toyota product, heck. You could buy one new, probably just change the oil the first 100,000 miles, and nothing would probably go wrong anyways. But it's a good idea to get some kind of records out of the car was taken care of, because you do need to know that the oil was changed. If you remember the Lexus that I did a few months ago in Tennessee, the guy unfortunately bought one for about nine grand from a Toyota used car lot, and the engine was all worn out because they'd never changed the oil, the previous owners. And when I pulled those spark plugs off, saw how covered they were with burn carbon I said get rid of this thing change the oil just get rid of it soon because the engines eventually gonna wear out you don't have to worry about it. the V8 engines even though they get bad gas mileage they have a long lifespan much better than their new idea that they're putting in the tundras of V6 turbos which they're already having problems with this is a tried and true engine that can basically run for ever but if you want to get one of these to heed my warning you better do it fast because since they're not selling anymore the prices are gonna go up look what happened to their cruisers they stopped making them i've seen people pay more money for used ones than they want brand new so if you want to get one of these you better look around fast and find it before the prices get even higher i doubt if they'll ever bring them back to the united states but you have to worry about parts they're still making them selling over the rest of the world you don't care about gas mileage you want a big giant family car to take you around and really hardly anybody takes them off road they don't need standards anymore you'll never get stuck yeah you're gonna pay for the gas mileage and you're gonna pay for the vehicle if you get a good one because they're not giving them away but consider what new cars the average new car in the united states these days Sheesh, it's like 25 grand more than he paid for this so <laughs> this will probably outlast most of the new ones now, if you wonder why a lot of people really swear by their Tundra trucks, here's a 2010 truck in Massachusetts, spent its whole life in Massachusetts, and has over 200,000 miles on it. Yet, for all intents and purposes, it almost looks like a brand new truck. I'm talking about the salt of Massachusetts, too. The chrome isn't even bad. It's a four-wheel drive, got a nice back seat in it. Yes, and a tiny bit of wood grain. <laughs> no wood grain anywhere else just these tiny little pieces and on the shifter leather seats are still in good condition now you expect this on the driver's side that always happens people getting in and out they always rub this through and it tears a little here you can put nice seat covers you can even get reupholstered you could dye it and get that fixed if you really wanted to check it out it's got 202,964 miles on it does the engine burn oil no, it's just perfectly fine. Even though he's never touched the fluid, he's the original owner. He said it's probably too late now, but it still ships perfectly fine. Because when you get out of the hood, you see the main reason people buy these things. Big old V8. It's the iForce 5.7 liter V8. And as you can see, it ain't got no stinking timing belt. It's got a timing chain. Generally, they last forever. The timing belts you're supposed to change every 100,000 miles. Relatively expensive. These have timing chains. I've never seen a timing chain ever break on one of these things. Like I say, this thing doesn't burn any oil. The only real big deal was he had to pay to replace the radiator, the plastic radiator finally broke and he had to replace that a few years ago. And if you know anything about these V8 engines that set up, it had that stupid EVAP problem with a pump on the engine, but he got that fixed under warranty by Toyota. They fixed it free, no questions asked, and it's never come back after 200,000 miles. It was a design flaw. They almost all break. Once you fix it, they don't break again. And he got it fixed under warranty, so he didn't care. ABS brakes, he said, have always worked. The charging system has always worked. You can see he's replaced the battery. It's got an AutoZone Duralast. The press is original, as is the alternator. Now you see there's corrosion on the aluminum. That's just what happens here in Massachusetts. That's superficial corrosion. Now, I asked this guy, I said, this thing is so clean. What do you do, hide it? He says, no, I drive it every day. Summer, winter, if it can handle the salt on the road in Massachusetts and still look this good, shows you how solid built they are. This Tundra isn't like some of the early ones. They got frame rot. As you can see, look at this frame. Man, it's still excellent, solid as can be, even though it's been in Massachusetts all these years. New and off, you can turn the traction control on or off. You can do the transmission for towing and hauling. And the four wheel drive system is electronic. You can set it to two wheel four-wheel high or four-wheel low which you have to push in yes yeah, not my favorite mechanical four-wheel drive like i showed in an earlier toyota sequoia it was much older than this it was mechanical but still it's a toyota it's electronic it's never broken on a guy they're pretty well designed four-wheel drive systems now as you can see we started up 
And of course it starts because it's a Toyota. He added the stereo system on it. It didn't come with this. Because he wanted a backup camera. So now I can see when he's backing up. It was built in San Antonio. There it is. Manufacturing Texas Incorporated. If you want the whole history, Toyota never made any bigger trucks. Then they decided to get bigger and they made the T100. And that was either made in Japan or assembled in Indiana where the forklift truck factory used to be. But they were only V6 and Americans are like, ah, it's not big enough. So then in Indiana, they started putting together the big old V8 Tundras. Instead of calling them T100, they called them Tundra. They kept the T and they got rid of the 100. You can toll out with these things, but just realize it's a big, heavy vehicle with a big V8 engine. You can make it two or four wheel drive. The gas hawks. He said he usually gets about 13 miles a gallon. And if he just goes on a highway, he might get 14 miles a gallon. <laughs> and that's not pulling or towing anything. They're strong, reliable trucks. You're just gonna have to spend money on gasoline. Now, with over 200,000 miles, this thing obviously is held up. And yeah, he's put a lot of gasoline in it. There's no arguing that, but it is a Toyota. And it runs perfectly fine on regular gas. You don't have to run any fancy gasoline. You can buy the cheapest gas you get your hands on. The thing will run perfectly fine. Massive brakes, front and rear. They stop fine too. I'll show you something about the quality of Toyotas. We'll open the back. The Tundra mat is still here and it's not ripped or torn. Yeah, birds have pooped all over it, but even the mat they throw in these things are well made. You want to keep it all nice inside. You can do like you did. You can go with Rhino linings. They do a good job. Look how well this one's held up. Let's close the hood, take it for a ride. He drove here on the highway. He got better than 14 miles a gallon. He got 14.4 miles a gallon driving on the highway here. Going 55, 60. Four wheel drives, got no problems going over the big lump at the end of the driveway. And for a truck, it's got a good ride. All the weight does add to a better ride. You go over bumps better. And yeah, you get a little bounce here and there, but the ride is quite comfortable. There's a way to go out. A few cars are coming. Got plenty enough power to take off. You step on the gas. Away it goes. This engine's got power up the wazoo. And that's why I like this V8 engine. And I'm not a fan of the new Tundras with a turbo V6. Even with Toyota, I'd kind of wonder about going from a strong V8 that can run forever to a V6. And look, they've had turbo problems and other problems already. I would personally not buy one. I would want an older one like this that's got a V8 engine. Got plenty of horsepower, torque passing and has a history of extreme long life. I have seen these things with 500,000 miles on them tow over 15,000 pounds. Now they don't rate them for that, but they can pull a lot more than what they're rated for. Now if this was mine, but it isn't, I'd be driving it in these fields here, seeing how it would fly through the furrows. But it's somebody else's, so I'll leave that to him if he wants to. But then again, he lives in Massachusetts and I doubt it's this thing's ever seen dirt. <laughs> <laughs> With that big old V8 engine, hey, it idles like a dream. No shakes, no nothing. And when you take off, like I said, step on the gas, it gets up and goes. Still shifts like a dream, too. As you can see, he's making sure God is on his side, too. He's not taking any chances. But you really aren't taking any chances if you buy a Toyota Tundra, really. Especially like him, but you buy it new. Even used, they're pretty bulletproof, but buying a new one. Other than, like I say, I'm not a fan of those V6 twin turbos that they have. Not a fan at all. There's no way they can beat these old V8s that can run forever. And obviously, they're building them fine in Texas, just like they did in Indiana. Hey, look at this thing. 13 years old. You'd think it just came off the showroom floor. And this is one that's been driven every day of its life in Massachusetts, summer, winter, salt, rain, you name it. They certainly got the quality control in San Antonio down pat. That's where they make all of them now. They make the Sequoias there too. They don't sell that many Sequoias. They sell a lot more of these. If you're looking for a big truck that can last forever, listen to me, get one of these Tundras. Just as I said, I'd stay away from those new twin turbo V6s till they get a chance to prove themselves. Let's see, are you gonna see a bunch of them that can go four or five hundred thousand miles without burning oil, being able to pull loads and stuff? And me, I had a verdict's out with me on that one. I like these old V8s, trusted. And if you're looking at a used one, hey, if you can find one that's got a timing chain instead of a timing belt, even better. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!